The big one is finally here. We're finally playing the main event. And we've played day one, you know, we've gotten in there, we've scrapped, and we made it through day one, and we made it through pretty well, especially this guy. I made it through with 74,000, which is pretty good. It's above average for day two. But Jonathan, how much do you have? I have 186,800 that's, chips. That's pretty good. It went well. I had some good things happen for sure. Average, just so you guys know, is about 66,000. So 74,000 is like, what, 15% above average, which is pretty sweet yeah. also. Uh, how, was, how did your day go overall? It went really well. I, I just felt like it was kind of easy to navigate the field just because the levels are so long and I was able to be patient. You know, things didn't go as well for me as they did for you, but we're gonna get to that right now. All our friendship ceases from now on. Like we mentioned, Jonathan has a ton of chips that had to happen somehow, and there was one hand in particular that went pretty well, I would say. Jonathan, let him know what happened. Yeah, um, so it was pretty late in day one. We were in level five, which is the last level of the day. So we've been playing for about eight and a half, nine hours at this point. I'm doing just fine. I've got about 75, 76,000. Um, honestly, I was pretty tired at that point. I was ready to go home and go to bed. <laughs> But here, but luckily, uh, a good thing happened. Under the gun raised. Uh, we were at the 250, 500 level, and under the gun made it 1,200. I had pocket aces plus two, so I decided to re-raise. Feels like a standard good play, play there. Yeah. So I made it 3,500. Pretty reasonable. It folds to the small blind, who makes it 16,000. What a joyous moment that must yes, have been. Yes, that felt really good. I was like, I was because I thought, oh, is he gonna call? Oh, I'm gonna have to play this hand three ways. I'm like, oh, he's not calling. <laughs> This is great. Like, I really don't want him to call. I want to not have it be three ways. So he makes it 16,000 under the gun folds and it comes back to me. And there's three ways to play here. We both had about the same amount of chips to about 75,000. I could definitely flat here. I can raise small or sometimes I can just go all in if it looks like he's ready to go. And I looked at him and he seemed like he wanted to put the chips in. So I just shoved 75,000 right there. And he called really quickly and, uh, and had what you'd expect him to have when he doesn't have the other two aces. He had two kings. Actually, even as he put the chips and he says, this happens, this always happens this way. <laughs> and uh, and th there was a queen in the window, which looked a lot like a king, but wasn't, and the board ran out clean, and suddenly I had 155,000 chips. That's a 300 big blind pot. That is amazing. So Grant ended up with 74,000, also a great, great stack after day one. Grant, tell us about your day, 1B, in the WSOP main event. Well, to be honest, I'm not gonna tell you about any hands I played because I played a lot of hands, none of them were over a 20K pot, but a lot of them are really reveal revealing of my strategy in the main event, so I don't feel like I can say it right now, but I promise I'll tell you some hand stories after the main's over. What I can say is that I had a really good time really enjoyable tables. And I felt like that's kind of the way I wanted to play. I wanted a situation like Jonathan's where you get to double up to 150K, but just kind of keeping pots small, never playing a huge pot where you're like, oh, I'm gonna bust day one of the main. And that's how my day went and it was great. I also <laughs> noticed a lot of the things that you see on ESPN from the main event are real. You know, I saw a guy dressed in a mink coat with like a fur hat. There was a guy who, whenever they said shuffle up on deal, which happened multiple times, he had a pair of symbols and he would clasp the symbols together. Luckily, I wasn't at his table because that would have annoyed the crap out of me and probably given me some ear damage of some sort. Um, I heard about a guy last year, by the way, who had a cooler full of individually sliced cake and every once in a while would just offer cake to somebody at the table. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't at that guy's table this year. So hopefully some more funny stuff can happen on day two. Some more hands that I can't tell you about hopefully happen on day two. Maybe a hand that I can tell you about, Maybe. like Jonathan's hand. That would be great. So Jonathan has 186K, not 155K, as he doubled up to with his aces. Obviously something else had to happen. There was another significant hand that you played, Jonathan. Let him know what happened. Yeah, this was cool. So this is after already doubled up now. So we're, we're kind of like near the end of the day. There's like 40 minutes left, 30 minutes left. It's late, everyone's pretty tired. My table was going bananas though. Everyone was raising and re-raising, it was crazy. And uh, this one player who had been just mixing it up in pots left and right and mostly taking the worst end of it actually since, since, as long as I had been there. 
Um, like he had one hand where he had king 10 on a 10x x board and it ran out 8-8 eight, eight, and his opponent had king 8. Like stuff like that happened to him. It was pretty brutal. So he opens an early position. Uh, the guy in his immediate left calls. I have two queens. He had made it 1100. Uh, I make it 3800, which actually I think is a little too small. I think it was a mistake, but whatever. A little small. Yeah. A little scarier than aces too. Y yeah. Um, but uh, last, anyway. Last level queens, a little scary. Well, whatever. Yeah. That's fine. I felt comfortable. I had a lot of chips. It was yeah. fine. Nothing really bad could happen. Uh, they both call the raise, everyone else folds, and we go to the flop. The flop is seven deuce, deuce, rainbow. Good flop. Yeah. Now, this under the gun guy decides to bet, and he bets big, at least relative to the size of the pot and relative to the way everyone had been playing up till now. He bets 6,000. The player to his immediate left folds, and here I am. I decide to call because I have queens. That's a good hand. Yeah. It feels pretty straightforward. The turn is the three of diamonds bringing a second diamond. Okay. He bets 9,000. So, you know, I'm sitting there and it feels like pretty straightforward again. I've got queens, I'm calling, mm -hmm. so I call. Uh, the river is the king of diamonds. So now we have three diamonds on the board and he bets 16,500. And I actually take about 15 seconds as I put the chips together. I say, boy, if you got sevens full, it's an interesting way to play it. <laughs> um, but I decide to call because I have queens. So I call and he turns over ace 10 off suit. He did have the ace of diamonds. So he actually had the, the backdoor nut blocker, but uh, that was it. And he was, that was most of his stack actually, he put in about 80% of the stack wow. on that hand. And he was just devastated in terms of the stack size. He actually yelled at me a little bit <laughs> when I turned my hand over. I don't know why, as if, I think he was yelling about how unlucky he was or something. Very unlucky with the I, ace 10 off there. I felt it was pretty straightforward to play the queens the way I did. So we're on to day two of the main event. It feels really good. Uh, you know, there's something I want to say though. Like, so I got aces in a huge hand and up against kings. And there's a lot of things that are lucky about that. One is that I got aces against kings. That alone is lucky right there. Number two, holding is really lucky because you may know Max Steinberg on the very first hand of day one A of the main event had aces, got it in against kings, and there was a king in the window and he was just out. And that's super brutal. And that happens kind of every year to somebody. Yeah. So I was lucky it didn't happen to me. Like 15% of the time when I'm up against Kings there, I'm just gone. Yeah. So just, it's really hard, hard I think sometimes to keep in your mind that like you need really good things to happen. A lot of them are sort of invisible. Right, I agree. I want to say something else. I want to shout yeah. out to all of you guys who are out here in Las Vegas who come up to us and say hi, because yeah. we've had a lot of you coming up to us and saying hi, That's even right. while we're filming, which is fine, because yeah. it's fun. We enjoy saying hi, we enjoy meeting you guys. I want to give a particular shout out to Andy. Andy, I played with you all day on day 1B, and he didn't reveal that he knew who I was, which was probably smart. Yeah. That was a good idea by Andy, because then he is not revealing that he knows my thought process or anything. We played all day together. We played some big, biggish pots together. You know, we got into little fights here and there. And then after the day was over, Andy came up and said, I'm a huge fan. I watch everything you do. And that was awesome because yeah. I kind of thought he hated me the whole day. <laughs> so it was great. It was great. So thank you, Andy. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone who wants to come up to us and say hi, we'd love to have you. We also have free sports bets to give out from Nitrogen. We're happy to give them to you. Just ask. But we'll hope to see you there at the main event at some point soon. If you can't say anything real nice, it's better not to talk at all is my advice.